So welcome to the uh, pre-Tottenham game chat. Um, I thought I'd do a little video first just to introduce the person that I'm about to speak to. He's a really old friend of mine. Um, he is a, I suppose, a world-renowned saxophonist. Uh, he's someone I used to play with a lot um, in a band. So um, I thought I'd just introduce him. His name's Kenji Fenton. At the end of the video, he'll tell you who he's played with, but I thought I would show you some videos now of him in action. So this is him. So Liverpool are playing Tottenham on Wednesday in a top of the table clash. Um, you thought just, that that would be the words, eh? I, I know, I know. And just um, <laughs> just before I get to talk to my uh, my guest who's joining me today, which I'm really excited about, um, just if you're watching this on YouTube, just give us a quick subscribe and click the bell for notifications. <laughs> But uh, joining me is an old friend of mine, uh, Mr. Kenji Fenton, who's a massive Tottenham fan. And um, I've not seen him for ages because he's a bit elusive. So I've managed to uh, <laughs> managed to force him to talk to me by doing this. So, Kenji, how are you, mate? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. It's exciting times. Exciting. Well, if you're used to it because your team win, have won for years and that. But for me, it's very exciting times. Yeah, well, we'll, well let's get into that. So uh, before we talk about the match... You know, mm-hmm. Mourinho comes in, Pochettino leaves. How were you feeling around that time about the, the new appointment of Mourinho and, and, and you know, what, what you thought that was going to mean for you? OK, so um, it's, I, I've got, I'm going to have an interesting take on this because so like what I think is probably not like a lot of football fans because unlike a lot of football fans, I still apply logic when it comes to football situations. <laughs> I don't just listen with my heart. So don't get me wrong. Pochettino, the Pochettino era was probably the best era I've ever seen at Tottenham, ever. Like, it was, it was incredible. But towards the end of it, it had run its course. Like, he was, like, when we didn't, the, when you guys beat us in the Champions League final, it really did take the wind out of our sails. And from what I could see, it was, it was a man and a team that had basically, we'd overachieved and overperformed for such a long time. They'd thrown everything they had at it and it just wasn't enough and there wasn't investment and there wasn't, you know, it's all well and good. Like It was a miracle that, you know, we got through that season where they didn't buy any players at all. Do you know what I mean? We got through that, got through that season and it, was, and it was lauded as a success. But when it came down to it, we just didn't have enough. And while I think Pochettino was great, I think he probably didn't feel like he had the support of the board. Um, probably felt a bit under undervalued, underloved. And as a consequence, I think it was time for everybody to, to change things up. Don't get me wrong, like uh, without them without them really supporting him, I don't think I don't I couldn't really see what was going to change. I didn't want him to go, but right. I also didn't want to continue to lose games. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, just the way that he spoke about Tottenham, like the love was good. There's something, something changed. Something okay. I don't know what it is because uh, you know the stadium's a big enough. loose around your neck as well financially. I'm guessing, and that's what that's what he was dealing with. Possibly, but also, but this, you say that, but I mean, look at what's going on go, gone on since. Like mm. we, the stadium's still there. The stadium at the moment is empty, so it's, they must be leaking money like it's going out of fashion. But all yeah. of a sudden, there's money to back Mourinho, and so I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it what that means from inside the club, but it definitely shows that there's a different impetus and a different different sort of support network around around Mourinho. So I, I think I think it had just it had run its course. And at the end of the day, like while we were playing some attractive football, um, there wasn't that we couldn't see out games. We still had that. I hate to say it, but what people say that Spursy feel about us, right? You know, I've 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 been I've been listening to Spurs, watching and listening to Spurs for ages, and we're the only team that can be like four nil up, and even in stoppage time, they're still saying that we, if only uh, Tottenham might win this game. You're like, for <laughs> fuck's sake, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, we're the only people that that happens to, 
And I think uh, one of the big changes at the moment and the thing that people can't get their head around, our fans, everybody else's fans, is that that's not the case now. Do you know what I mean? The concept of us scoring a goal and, the, and it not looking shaky is new, is new ground. Like, we can defend. Mm. We can have another plan. If a team set up... Because what happened, you know, first, first couple of seasons, Poch comes in, he, no one expects him to do as well as he does. We're playing this really exciting football. Uh, but obviously, obviously in football, what happens is you, you sort of, if you've got one way of playing, people find you out, they find out what your weakness is. And we couldn't, we cut, you know, for years, we've struggled to break down, break down teams that come and park the bus. Mm-hmm. That never used to happen. Everyone had a go at Tottenham because we, we, we're known for being soft. And all of a sudden we've got to this status where, you know, a Burnley or a Stoke or these people, they come and they, they come to defend and nick a goal. And we, and we couldn't deal with it and, and because we had one way to play. And if, you know, we have one way of way to play and one sort of system to do that. And now what I'm seeing with Mourinho um, is different ways to play different teams and different ideas. And But what I'm also seeing is a set of players that are buying into that belief and a set of players that want to win and do anything to win. Mm. It's not about necessarily being cute all the time. People are understanding that, yeah, sometimes against some team, teams we can go... And we can express ourselves, but against other teams, we've got to do the dirty work. We've got to track back. We've got to keep it tight. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got people like Harry Kane. He's having more, having more touches in his own box than he has in, in the opposition box. Mm. And also, we're, we're getting that. Like for years, we've watched good teams like yourselves, like United, like your Chelsea's. Uh, we've watched them be able to win without having to play very well. Yeah, a good team is. You know what I mean? Like a team isn't going to play very well all like the 38 games of the season. It's not going to happen. Hmm. So you need to be able to play badly and still get a result. We've never been able to do that. We've got to be on your A game. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And all of a sudden, yeah, all right. Sometimes it doesn't look pretty, but I've seen pretty, bro. I've seen pretty and got nowhere. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I am all right. <laughs> so I mean. <laughs> So you, you're pleased with Mourinho? I mean, the, 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 I I'm pleased that. with change. It's okay. like, I'm pleased with change. I'm pleased with Mourinho. I'm very pleased with Mourinho because I wanted somebody to come in and think tactically, move some players around. Like, there are lots of players, in, you know, I wanted competition for, for spots. I wanted some people to hear some harsh truths. And I just wanted something different. We've been doing that, mm. like, no matter what manager we've had, like, Tottenham have played a similar sort of style for as long as I can remember. Different managers, different players, different but similar sort of style for quite a long time. And it's not worked out. So it's, we've got to that do something different. Part of the Tottenham DNA to play pretty attractive football, it's always been there. And they've mm. always took managers on that basis. And I, I think when Mourinho come in, because Mourinho's known for being a pragmatist, isn't he? You get the defense yeah, but, right first, and then. But but I've always said, like the last few teams he's had, they've been very pragmatic. Whereas you go back to his early Chelsea team, that was a hell of a good footballing team. They were solid. Well, I think they it played good football as well. Absolutely, and I think it's to do with what you can do. It, it's to do with your opponent and it, opponent, and it's to do with the tools that you have. And yes. I think that what we are noticing is like uh, when he came, when when he did come in. Uh, and you look at the players that we had, yeah, that was, we were just seeing a lot of pragmatism and people were saying, you know, oh, Harry Kane is going to, you know, they're not playing attacking football, Harry Kane will leave, you know, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. But, you know, now that he's got a couple of players in, he's managed to, he's managing to build a team and build an ethos and he's had time to, because the problem with Tottenham is, has never been that they can't play football. It's obviously something else. It's obviously about belief. It's obviously about that commitment. It's obviously about believing that they can do it. And you're seeing, we're seeing a different animal, I think. Mm. And the longer that, I think that it's just Mourinho's way of thinking, Mourinho's way of thinking from what I can see. And, you know, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm, I don't have the footballing ground in that lots of, I'm not, a, I'm not a tactic, tactic football guy, right? I love, I love my club, but I'm not trying to make out like I know loads about football. Like, so anyone on YouTube that wants to at me, leave me alone, all right? I play the saxophone, that's what I know, Okay. But in my opinion, in my opinion, he's come in and he's gone, right, first thing, let's, let's shore up things. Let's focus on not losing. And then we'll focus on how we can express ourselves. And there'll be times, like, it's not all been boring. Like, tell so, United, like, we, we, we absolutely peppered United. And now, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, I think there will be times. And, and what we'll see is as the team, as the players get used to keeping tight and that, the way 
to defend as a unit, they will learn the times that they can go and express themselves. But also, yeah. also for us, you know, we, we were a club that, you know, we'd lose, it, we, we'd lose a game 5 0, but we'd have 25 shots on target and score none of them. Mm. And we'd always complain about that as Tottenham yeah. fans. We're like, this is rubbish. Look at, look at, look at Chelsea's, look at these people. They have three shots on goal and win 3 0. Yeah. Now we're doing that. People are like, it's boring. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> Do like, you know what I mean? Like, literally, the thing that we've always complained about us not doing, we are now doing, and people are still moaning. Yeah. Football fans will never be happy. No. But I, Very I like happy. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and what I'm also realising is that uh, football, football is football. Um, football is attacking and defending, right? But lots of football fans only enjoy watching attacking. But actually, the more that the more games I watch and the more that I sort of understand what's happening and I see players tracking back and I see like the way that Hoiberg and Suzuko or the way that, that you no, know, it is, it is, there is an art to it. It is a system mm. and it is beautiful. And the the release, the like the counter-attack attacking football that Son and Kane are playing. I mean, it, what's not beautiful about that? Yeah, right, maybe it happens only two, two or three times a match, but what more do you need? You've won the game. Mm. I, 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 I just understand. going into, I mean, you mentioned the right tools. So pick out the standout players because I know Holberg's made a big difference to you. That's what I Hoiberg's think. Holberg's made, made a massive difference, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, do you know what someone that gets uh, uh, doesn't get enough credit from me though? Suzoko. Right, okay. Suzoko, uh, if you watch us play at the moment, because the reason that we're defending well isn't necessarily that the defence has got any better. I feel like Serge Aurier, while, while he is, um, he's, he's, he's a bit of an old school Tottenham player. He's what we call exciting, which essentially means a bit, a bit reckless. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it means that, yes, he might score you a goal, but he'll also, he also might get sent off and his positional play might not be that great. But what, what, what we're noticing now is any time that Sizoko goes forward and... Um, and we get caught on the counter, you'll notice that, I'm um, not Suzuko, sorry, any time that Aurea goes forward and we get caught on the counter, he doesn't need to, he, you know, he, come, he, tra- he tracks back, but Suzuko is in that slot. He, he sometimes slips into right back. If Reguillon goes forward, he'll slip into left, but he's covering those holes. And with Hoiberg in front of that, they're working, like one slips into defence, the other one cleans up in front, and all of a sudden it's shoring things up at the back a little mm. bit. And, and then you're getting your, you're getting your, your, your players like Dyer who, you know, no one, no one thought Dio was going to be that great a centre back. But when he's got the right support, when there's organisation around and everybody understands their role and they're working together, all of a sudden people have the confidence to shine. Do you they, know what they I mean? Look like, like, they look like a world class player because everything's working around them and they're not exposed. It's like anything, it's like anything, mate. You're a singer, but you're only as good as the band behind you, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean, doesn't matter how brilliant you are. Doesn't yeah. matter how brilliant you are if you're not working together. No, honestly, I've been there. I remember. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, that's my two pence. And so I, how? Um, I mean, everyone's talking about um, Tottenham's counter-attacking prowess at the moment. Mm. Uh, you've talked a lot about the defence and the organisation, but I mean, that, Son's a fantastic player. How do you assess the way you've? I mean, is is it is it solely counter-attacking football, or is it is it more? Is there a patient build-up side of it as well? I think that there is. A it's it's a clinicalness. I just, that's not a good word. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Oh, that's <laughs> such a good word. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's that idea of I feel like it's that it feels to me like he's come in and gone, look, you guys are great, you are brilliant, you have you you have the ability, but why is it taking you eight shots to score a goal? Why is that? What is the reason? I would rather you had you know, two shots and scored two goals. If you only have two shots in the game and you, and you score two goals, then that is, that is striking prowess. Mm. I think he's got that mentality in them that not to waste opportunities. And when you do attack, to make it count. I think that that's what's happening because we're now seeing less sort of pointless build-up play and a lot of direct play. Mm. Do you know what I mean? A lot of that. And that idea as, as well of Kane, um, Kane and Son... Working it, working in, in tandem, but Kane being willing to drop back because Kane has always been able to play those balls. He's always been able to put that that um, those cutting passes because a bit like Alan Shearer, a striker knows where you, where you want the ball. Don't they? They know yeah. where you want the ball. So if you've got 
if you've got that and you've got technique, then life is nice. And, yeah. and also he's not the quickest. Yeah. So like, like he's not the quickest. So why not use, and also everybody knows about Harry Kane. So they're trying to mark him out of the game. Mm. Actually, a lot of the time when he's in the box, he's pointless. He doesn't have two or three men on him. He drops deep though. And Son runs in behind and he finds Son, which is nice. And also, you know, Son's always been able to finish with both feet. It's just that belief and that service. Completely. Um, So how do you see you guys lining up on tomorrow night? This... Do you have any injuries to deal with at the moment? Uh, I'm unsure. I'm I'm unsure, if I'm being honest. I don't. I don't really know because I've had to work this week, so I haven't been. I haven't been all over my phone like I usually am. <laughs> but I, uh, I see. I don't see. I, I kind of. What the the interesting one for me is always who does he start with Son and Kane up front? Will you get a Ber- Stephen Bergwijn, or will it be someone like Lucas Moura? I think it will probably be Stephen. He seems to be going with Stephen Bergwijn at the moment. I think it's because Stephen Bergwijn, um, he's. It, He's, he seems to be more willing to do the sort of tracking back in the defensive thing as well. From what I'm seeing, up, does, he, minute, does, he, does he set up most games in a four-three-three? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or four, <clears throat> four, then sort of two. Okay, three-one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yep. But um, I see, I see Hoiberg in there. I see Hoiberg and Sizoko in there. I think you'll get. I mean, I don't know because Salah's quick, so I wonder whether he might he might go with he might swap out Alvaro out for Sanchez for us possibly. Okay, maybe if he wants a bit more pace in the recovery. But I, I mean, at the moment, I, I see him kind of going with the with the team that he's been going with because it has been working out. Mm. It has been working out. So I see. Uh, I don't know whether uh, you get Aurier or Doherty. It seems to be much of a muchness, but I reckon you probably get Aurier on the right. Um, Larissa is obviously in goal. And then, yeah, so the only spot that I'm, I'm always like, oh, I wonder what could happen here. And I think a, a lot of Tottenham fans are like, I wonder what could happen here in this attack because we know we've got Gareth Bale. But, oh, but um, You never mentioned also, Gareth Bale as a starter. Is that because he's injured? I don't, I haven't seen anything at the moment. Right to prove that he should be, if I'm being honest. Like, I think he, he came, he didn't have match fitness. He's getting his match fitness back slowly and we're starting to see uh, a few sort of, um, a few glimpses mm-hmm. of what could be. But we also don't know what sort of player he is. And also, um, I feel like it's important at the moment at Tottenham, the, the thing that's different at Tottenham at the moment, it doesn't feel like anybody's a guaranteed start. It feels like if you're training well, you'll get games. And that. That's sort of been... It's a good culture to, to cultivate, isn't it? Definitely. And also competition for... Like, it's so weird at Tottenham at the moment. Like, as I keep saying, all the things we've always wanted, we've got, and everyone's complaining. I can remember when, like, people were like, well, the thing is, we've got no strength in depth. The thing is, we've only got 11 players, really. It's like, you know, if first 11's not out, it's a real problem. And so then we get a few more players in, and things look good. And so they drop Deli Alley, and they're like, this is disgusting. And I'm like, but this is what we wanted. We wanted to have... So many good players that even the even the people you don't think should start can can start and do a good job. And now we've got that. The Delhi Alley thing is quite, quite interesting because he if you did you have you watched the uh, Amazon Prime documentary? Yeah. He has that he, he, he very much is trying to build that kid up and, and trying to get mm. his confidence back in it. So there's a whole episode pretty much talking yeah. about Ellie Alley and going, you can do anything. And and now what's happened is he's he's fell by the wayside. Mourinho has obviously maybe got sick of trying to build him up and trying to get him to to, to perform at his maximum. He said, I mean, in the, in the in that uh, documentary, he was it was all about he was such a bad trainer. Mm. Um so uh, it, it would appear from the outside looking in that he's had enough of Deli Ali. I mean, he tried to move. I him don't off, think right? that's the case. No. Like he's still well, he's still playing. He's still playing him in in, uh, in the Europa League. He's still playing him in cup games. And actually, um, at the weekend against Palace, who did he look to? Mm. He brought on Deli Ali at the end of the game. Like that's not somebody that you get is getting frozen out. So I think I think everybody just like. Everybody, unfortunately, when, when, when not a lot's going on, people need to create news, don't they? So, mm. you know, I, I feel like if Deli Ali had a problem with it, he wouldn't still be at the club. 
you know what I mean? He wouldn't still be at the club and he'd be making rumblings. He's got a social media. If he wanted to be a dick about it, he could be a dick about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, he, and, it, and he's not. And actually, when you look at his own social media pages, there's lots of pictures of him in the gym saying, you know, uh, I'm going to do my, my talking on the pitch. I'm going to, you know, I, I am everyday progress. And, you know, and I think that there's a culture these days that with, with fans and players that because they're massive superstars that, that they can't take criticism. But we all know that like, we all know that sometimes if you're off your game, you need to be told that you're off your game. You need to, you need to have your, your nose rubbed in it and you need to buck your ideas up to get dad to pick you again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's all it is. Like, it's all it is. And he's just, he's having his medicine, unfortunately, in front of loads of people. But also, but that's the rub, isn't it? Like when, when we're being celebrated, it's in front of lots of people. But when you're getting told off, unfortunately, same vibes. You have to take it, don't you? Give me... Um... I think he is taking it, though. Like, no, no do, rumbling. There's no coffee. noises. There's no noises about him um, throwing his toys out the pram, no? Well, not that, not from what I've, not from what I've seen and what I've researched, and I have looked for it because obviously after the, after the uh, little the, the the documentary and that sort of little insight, um, everybody, you, you're like, oh, what's going to happen now? He keeps getting told about himself. What's going to happen? So you know, I have uh, I, I have been looking at it, and I, I'm not, I'm getting vibes of a man that doesn't want to be a prima donna, but that's the way I'm looking at it. But um, again, you know, I try not to get overexcited. Try not to get overexcited and not get carried away. What you do? Do you know what I mean? I try and use logic a That's little bit, but well, I know it's not football, but I can't make I can't take the emotional roller coaster. You can get carried away when your team wins most weeks, but the life the life I've had with Tottenham, I need to manage my expectations. Do you know what I mean? And I need to. I can't. It can't be ruining my week. Do you know what I mean? Like that can't be. Not to say I don't care as much, but I just I feel like over the years we've been so like this that I'm I'm. I've tried to find a way through that's a uh, bit more like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm there. I'm there. Do you you don't mean? need no pizza. Yeah. This yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. But similarly, you know, when when it's good, I don't get overly gassed because yeah. uh, like uh, yeah, yeah. So give me before I let you go. Give me a um a prediction. What do you think the score will be? Well, no, wait. Tell me about you boys. What are you guys going to do? What are we facing? <laughs> Do you well, know what I mean? You, this isn't a one-way thing because I know you've got a, you've got an inside track to to Kenny Dalglish. Like this could be this could be going straight to Klopp. I could be doing my boys a disservice here. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? So no, this no, is no, dirt. No, 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 no. <laughs> It'll only be me and you watching this. Um, <laughs> we you you're facing a team that's is is struggling with injuries at the moment. Okay. Uh, so uh, we've obviously got Van Dyke and Gomez out for the season. Um, Matip came off with an injury the other day. Okay. So that means we've got no fit senior centre-backs at all. Okay. We only have three. We've got two kids and Fabinho, who's, to be honest with you, as good as any centre-back in the league, I think, to be honest with you, he's that good. Mm. Um, so it'll be him. It depends whether Matip's knock gets him back. Um, if not, it'll be one of the kids who'll be playing at the back. We've just got Alisson and Trent Alexander-Arnold back. They've had one game, so that's good news. And then, um, you know, we're in midfield. We we're missing Thiago, who we've only seen for two halves, and practically the two best halves of football I've ever seen a footballer play. Mm-hmm. We just haven't had him. He's just he, he he's had an injury um, from the Everton game, and we're missing Cater. He's out. So we've got about seven Jotters now injured as well. He's out for two months. So we must have seven players who. Would certainly four of them would probably start um, in if you were playing in the Champions League final and everyone was fit, um, mm. and then we've got some players who, who you need in your squad at this time because there's that many games. So it's it's mm. it's a bit difficult. We are trundling along and doing really well at it. Mm-hmm. We we shouldn't with the fact that we've lost Van Dyke and Gomez. You would think that we'd be we should be about sixth or seventh in the league and we're still joint top with you. So we're doing all right. You know what I mean? And I think we're all quite thankful of that. And we just have to keep getting trundling along, get through December, get into January, hope that we've got a couple more players coming back and then we can start playing our football. But we haven't, um, Wolves, we played well. The last game we didn't play well. It's just a bit up and down at the moment. And I think that's... I love that. You you genuinely think just because you've lost two players that you guys should be sick. That's mental. 
do you guys were, did you not see how you guys peppered the league last year? I know I realize there's a big that, gap between you and everyone I'm else, bro. Talking like, about this year, so that I think if everyone was fit, we would be flying. Yeah, but not. And the reason is because we've we've got a raft of injuries to key players, and we've. I mean, Allison's been in and out all season, and we've had a eighteen year old, um, a young lad playing in the in the, mm. in goal. So it's just been a bit up and down, mate. But we're we're doing all right, considering we're doing all right. Um, and it, you know, I'm I can't wait for the game tomorrow night. I really can't wait for the game tomorrow tomorrow night. <laughs> another player that I uh, another player that I would like to see feature uh, tomorrow. If he's fit, um, is Endo Bele. When he first came, when he first came, uh, he's highly rated at Leon. He was highly, highly, highly rated. Mm. Didn't start that great. Didn't look fit. Just didn't look, didn't look right. But it, 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 it gradually, gradually, and I, you can only get at the moment about 60, 65 minutes out of him. But recent weeks, um, I've re- we've really seen a turn and he can really like some of the things he can do in the middle of the park. He's a bit like, he's a bit like the way that he shields the ball and can carry the ball. He's a bit like, I, I, I'd call him, uh, do you remember when we had Dembele? Mm. He's like a Dembele, but with a, with a better end product. Right. Okay. If that makes sense. And I feel like he could be a real key for us against you guys tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I really want, I, I'm really not sure whether we can do, we can do another week of like I don't I don't know if they I don't know if they can if he can approach it like he did City and Arsenal and just sit I don't think we can soak up ninety minutes of your. I pressure. think that's what he'll do. I don't know if I, 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 I do. We can hack it. I, I mean, he's coming oh. to Anfield. We've got fans in the stadium as well, and they made a lot of noise the other day when I watched the game. Yeah, uh, I think he'll come and he'll look to it as on the break because I mean, like I say, we might have a kid playing at the back. So it, mm. the break wouldn't be a bad thing as long as you can keep it tight. Well, uh, that's what I, that's what I, you, that's what I always worry with about about you guys because you know I can remember Potch trying to trying to kind of trying to do something like that and it did not bode well. <laughs> it did not bode well at all. It didn't. We were like a colander, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so give me your prediction. What do you think the score is going to be? Um, I. <sighs> What do I think or what do I want? Different questions, aren't they? Give me what both. do I want? Okay, <laughs> what I would like, what I would like without being, a, without being completely ridiculous about it is I feel like we might concede because it's been a, it, it, I feel like we might concede. So let's, what I would like is like 2-1. Okay. And your voice is Sorry, sorry. Excuse me one second. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's what happens about. when you, yeah, I'm in a corridor, mate. I'm outside someone else's office and they're trying to film the video. Here we go. <laughs> this is better. Right, yeah. So what I would like is a 2-1-3-1, one, one, something like that would be great. Would be great. Um, what I predict, one or. Yeah. You think it'd be tough? That's tight. what I predict. Like, I think it'd be a hard. That's what I predict. Yeah. That's yeah. what I predict. I would agree. I would agree. But we'll see. It's exciting, isn't it? To top of the table clash. It's really exciting, mate. It's it's buzzing. I'm buzzing. And uh but you know, we could talk that like, I could talk all day about the, the mixed feelings that I have about that as well, with the way that we reported and the way that you know, nothing's ever good enough when we do it. But me as a Tottenham fan, I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy Before buzzing. I let you go, just um for people who don't know who you are, can you give us a mm-hmm. little tell me, tell um Tell me some of the, the things you've been doing over the last few years. I know you're not doing much at the moment because neither of us are. <laughs> but um, uh, tell me some of the things that you've done in the last... Yes, yeah, so I'm a saxophone player. Uh, I play... I've got a horn section called Hot City Horns. Awesome. And we, and we play... I do a lot of session work, so I play for a lot of artists. So uh, Go on, so clang. I'll let you clang, go, clang away. Go on, clang. Uh, so names include, uh, so we currently play for Paul McCartney, which is nice. You do? Um, uh, Emily Sande, Jess Glynn, um, Ollie Merz, um, who else? Labyrinth. Just anyone that loves me, really, if I'm being honest. So, and, you know, anyone out there that needs a horn player, holler, because we're all available at the moment. So available. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you. Uh, wicked dude wicked and thank you so much for asking and like i say 
that because I, I know what I know what the internet's like. No one, I never said I was a pundit or anything. These are just my own opinions. <laughs> Anyone that dis- disagrees with me, not bothered. Honestly, not bothered. This is what I think you're entitled to your opinions too. <laughs> Well, after that disclaimer, um, we're going to leave it there. But thanks very much, mate. And um, you too, mate. Okay. Cheers. Love, love, dude. Cheers.